you all this morning. Welcome, Pastor Lord. Good to be here. So please stand with us this morning to be upright. Just seen that song that I was playing, I Surrender All. It's a good song to start off with this morning. Number 25. Amen. All to Jesus. Amen.
time. Um, they have some prayer requests, um, but that will come forward this time. scripture here on Friday night because they really blessed me. Uh, and uh, as we pray together, it's from 1 John chapter 5. Praise the Lord. It says in verse 14, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heals us. And if we know that He hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of Him. Praise the Lord. Yeah. We have petitions. Yes, sir. We have the Word. Amen. We've been called by the Word. Yeah. Amen. And He hears us. We have this confidence. So let's just um, bow our hearts. Amen. And we, uh, we just need to see. And if there's whatever's on your heart this morning, we all have needs. Amen. And then we can try and struggle, we can try and fight and work it out ourselves. Or we can just give it to the King. And then we can give it to our Father. Who careth for us, who loveth us. Who knows our petition before we even utter it. He knows our hearts. Heavenly Father, even as we come this morning, Lord. Father of God, even as we've heard the expression from the young people this morning, Father, he who the Son has set free is free indeed. That's free from bondage. That's free from anything that would hinder your children this morning, Father. And even those that are connected to us, oh God, through friendships, oh God, through things, oh God, Lord, through circles of influence, Lord, where you have placed us, Father. Oh Lord, even as we extend the petitions unto you this morning, Father. Oh Lord, Father, may you just come down, oh Lord, oh God, in your house this morning, Father. Lord, may your spirit of truth, Father. Oh God, the great deliverer, Father, oh God. Lord, go out on this prayer of faith this morning, Father. Lord, and meet the need of the hour, Father. Lord, even as it prepares, oh God. Lord, for the coming of the word, Father. Lord, for even when they heard the word, Father, they were delivered, Father. The Spirit of God fell upon them, Father. Oh, Lord Jesus, we just thank you, Father. Oh, Lord, oh, God, that we can, Lord, as the centurion had enough faith, Father. Lord, oh, God, just to ask for you to speak the word, Father. 
And Lord, you've placed that in the believer this morning. Lord, to prophesy again, Lord. Oh God, Lord, to speak the word, Father. Oh Lord, we just ask, Father, for these petitions as they go up before you, Lord, that you'd even answer them, Father. And with thanksgiving, oh God, we thank you for our sister, Lord, that you've delivered her, Father, oh God, and Lord, from the hospital, Father. May you continue to deliver her, Lord, that this day, Father, oh God, lowering that blood pressure, bringing it to normal. Lord, for this young man, Father, Oh, Lord, has broken his ACL, Father, and needs surgery, Lord. May you intervene, Father. Lord, may you touch that place. May he know that there is a God that cares, Father. That there is a greater physician than what this science civilization can produce, Lord. And we're so grateful to you, Father. Oh, Lord, and for this little boy Moses, Father. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord, from the brokenness, oh, God. Oh, Lord, that's where you specialize. Oh, God, in brokenness, Father. Oh, Lord, you bring something from nothing, Father. Lord, we pray for deliverance, Lord, for the families, Father. Lord, for the peace of God, Father. Oh, God, enter into that home, Lord. Oh, God, to bring a restitution, Father. Lord, to bring a restoration, Father. Lord, it's where you specialize, Lord. So we just thank you, Father. And even for the, Lord, the prayers, oh, God, that are, Lord, unspoken tonight, Lord. Those things that are in our hearts, Father. Oh, Lord, in those doors, oh, God, that, Lord, may be closed to the public, Father. But, oh, God, they're never closed to you, Lord, because you enter into every door, even if it's been shut, Father. Oh, Lord, even as Peter, oh, God, was, was in prison, Father, locked down, oh, God, and had no way of escape, yet, Lord, Father, you came to his need, Father. Lord, may you meet, meet the needs of your children this morning. We commit all things into your hands, asking for your blessings in the name that is above every name. Oh, the name, oh God, oh Lord, that when you first spoken on human lips, Lord, brought a resurrection, Father. Lord, with that name, we just commit all things into your hands. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Prepare our hearts for the word. Let's like stand for once again. Yeah. You're able to stand. Yeah. Let's go to the full chorus. The full Lord supplementary. The Lord prepare me. Yeah. Amen.
Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Amen. Amen. Uh, don't know what number that is. 14. Supplementary. All right. But I think most of us, we know it, is it? Amen. Amen. thankful this morning just to come in your presence to know that you are not ashamed to be identified with us that Lord you down through the ages Lord through the Holy Scriptures through the law of Moses through the prophets Lord and the Old Testament Saints you've just been making your way that you could be in our hearts Lord Jesus Christ sinners saved by grace Yet, O oh God, you call us your bride. Lord Jesus, we just rejoice in that knowledge, Father. And as we come to the preaching of the word, we pray that you have the liberty, Lord, to minister this word to our hearts, to continue, Father, to feed us with the spiritual food that is in due season, that we may grow from strength to strength, from glory to glory, until we fully and perfectly manifest even the very character of our Lord and our Savior. We thank you, Father. Be thou with us. In the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you, saints. Amen. Greet you all. Amen. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Just happy to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 We could have been anywhere. Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. Amen. But God has given us grace yeah. that we are here. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And when we have agreed to be here, and we are gathered for the true revealed word of the hour. Amen. The presence of the Lord. Yes, his sir. angel is here. Amen. Because that is promise. Amen. So we, we rejoice when that happens. Yes, we may come brother broken and the enemy trying to throw bombs and punches. But when we walk out of here we are walking out a different Amen. people. Amen. Even the devil will be able to tell that this is a different fight Amen. now. Amen. Amen. So we trust God and Amen. thankful for that. Amen. Let's continue praying one for another. Amen. Amen. And let's remember our brothers. I think uh, God is giving us grace just to be able to gather like this. Amen. Yeah. Amen. In some parts of the world, things seem to be trying to get out of hand. Uh, so we just want to remember all the brothers Amen. and all the sisters and really be thankful. Amen. And really be thankful. Some people have not met since February Amen. for services. Amen. And we know when that happens. The pandemic after the pandemic. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes you realize COVID-19, COVID you can survive it. But the pandemic that comes after the pandemic, after five months of not going to church, things come up in a church. 
And we need to pray for our brothers. Yes, sir. Amen. It's a trend the world over. Amen. As churches restart the services, things just start to pop up. But it's a result of five months of not fellowshipping in person. It, it has an effect. Yes, sir. And so we really want to thank God that we have this privilege and we want to take full advantage of that. Amen. And make sure that whilst we have the chance, we maximize. Yes, sir. We know it will not stay like this all the time. Yes, Amen. But whilst we still have the chance, yes. brother, we want to feed. Yes. Amen. Amen. Like, the, like the bears do in the, in the Arctic places, like the crocodiles do. Amen. They feed so much. They know that I need a lot of food. When I'm hibernating, at least there's energy to keep me going. Yes. Amen. So whilst we still have the chance, brother, we want to take in as much as we can. Use the gifts of God that are here, the fivefold ministry, whatever, love one for another, fellowship, all those things to really invest so that when that time comes, whenever it's going to come, we don't know when, but when that time comes, we'll have enough energy, enough fuel in the tank to see us through. Amen. Amen. The book of Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. We start from verse 16. I uh, appreciate the, the young people. Uh, I just requested them last night to sing that song again. It was such a blessing last week. Amen. Amen. So what you saw them doing there, they didn't practice. Uh, so I think they did a very good job. Amen. And uh, we appreciate the Lord. Uh, I think they had their peak. Their memory is sharp. Amen. Their voices are good. Their health is good. That's right. Amen. They can remember things. They have the strength and, and the zeal. So we just need to harness that yeah. and make use of it. Amen. Amen. Because when they reach my age, things will start slowing down. <laughs> no, <Pastor. laughs> Praise God. Luke chapter 4. Uh, we start from verse 16. Uh, I didn't recognize any visitors amongst us. If there's any, just be welcome in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We are just gathered here for his word, and for fellowship around his word. Uh, sometimes we don't recognize people and it, it just doesn't sit well with them. But we just want you to be free in the house of the Lord. <coughs> Amen. Luke chapter 4, we start from verse 16. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. The Lord Jesus Christ, it was his custom to go to church on a service day. Amen. 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 As his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister and sat down in the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled Amen. in your ears. Amen. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which, he, which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph? Is this not Joseph's son? Amen. May the Lord add blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. You may all be seated. Just a short while I want to speak on thy place in the Holy Scriptures. Thy place in the Holy Scriptures. Amen. If there's anything that gives an individual confidence, is to be able to realize that you have a place yes, in this Bible. Amen. And when you have seen that place in the Bible, then you can have confidence 
to discharge whatever duties you have. But if you don't see your place in the scriptures, then the enemy is going to come and try to shake you away from what you say are your convictions. Amen. And sometimes it seems like you, you are proud, you are overconfident when you know your place. That's why even when the Lord Jesus Christ just gave them back the scroll and he says, this day, this scripture is fulfilled. Is this not Joseph's son? What is he talking about? This brother, who does he think he is? And if you continue with the scripture, you realize that it made them very, very upset. But he was just putting a finger to a scripture that referred to him and saying this scripture, exactly what is being spoken of here is being fulfilled right now before your very eyes. He wasn't lying. He wasn't proud. He wasn't trying to show off. He was telling them the truth. Amen. 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 But that confidence of knowing his place is what gave him confidence to carry out his duties without fear, without favor. Because he understood perfectly what his purpose on the earth was. And each and every believer needs to understand their purpose. And the only way you can understand your purpose is when you can find your place in the scriptures. In the message, Jehovah Jireh, uh, part 2, 640403, on paragraph 176, he says here, Now, real faith doesn't shift by creeds and man-made doctrines and unbelief. It stays right with the word. Real faith in the word. And where can you put your faith on anything else but the word? Yes, sir. If God said it, hold your finger to it. Amen. Brother, you put your finger on a, on a verse and brother, like you poke through the Bible and say, this is me, this is, this is where I am. He says, he says um, hold your finger to it. That's true. It doesn't shift. It draws from God's breasted book, the Bible, his attributes, what he promised, what he promised. That's his word. The word produces itself. It has to be a thought before the word, then word, then word is manifested. And that's where you draw your strength from, believing for the creator like he was the creator that made the world. Amen. Amen. The first thing is a thought. And then the thought is expressed in word. And when it has been expressed, then comes the physical manifestation. Amen. Amen. But before the manifestation has to be word. Amen. And we are all here by God's divine appointment. And we are here because we were in the thoughts of God from before the foundation of the world. And God himself said, let there be. Amen. So the word was spoken. And brother, at an appointed time, we were going to be made manifest. Amen. And our being here is a manifestation of the spoken word of God. Amen. Amen. And because God said he shall have a bride without spot or wrinkle, he spoke it. Amen. He expressed it. And it became the word. But the word had to come to a time of manifestation. That's why we are here this morning to hear the message of the hour. That's why we are here this morning trusting God in his word because we are here because he said we we would be here. And he said there shall be a bride without spot or wrinkle. Amen. And we've got our finger on that scripture. Amen. Why? Because we know that scripture speaks of us. Matthew chapter 11. Thank you, Lord. All right, let's go to let's start with Matthew 3 and then we just go. Matthew chapter 3. Matthew 3, we start just from verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John he had his raiment of camel's hair, and a leathen girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Even John the Baptist Amen. had to identify his place in the scriptures. Amen. Amen. He's, he had to find his place Amen. in the scriptures. Amen. And he says, this John that you are seeing here is the one who is spoken of by the prophet Isaiah. Who says the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Amen. prepare ye the way of the Lord and make his path straight. Amen. So when the scripture is given, it does not give the full name Amen. like John the Baptist. Amen. Amen. But it is a word of prophecy Amen. that is spoken. And when your time comes and you have been mentioned in the scriptures, God himself who is going to reveal to you that that portion of scripture refers to you. There was no name there that said John, but the Holy Spirit revealed to John that the prophet Isaiah, when he said that, was referring to him. Amen. And always when you are here, God will reveal to you your portion in the scriptures. Amen. And so you start to realize that he picks his place. Amen. Amen. And he says, that's my place there. I'm the one that was spoken of by Isaiah. Amen. Amen. And if we go to Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11, if we start... Let's start just from verse 1. And it came to pass, when Jesus had made an end of commanding his twelve disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and shew John again those things which he do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Amen. And blessed is ye, whosoever shall not be offended in me. Amen. And they departed. Jesus began to say unto the multitude concerning John, what went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet. Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written. Real recognizes real. Genuine recognizes genuine. Scripture recognizes scripture. Amen. The Holy Ghost recognizes the Holy Ghost. You cannot deny the Holy Ghost in another brother. You cannot deny the Holy Ghost in another sister if you do have the Holy Ghost. Amen. Even the Lord Jesus Christ, he identified his portion in the scriptures and he could put a finger on it and say this day is this scripture fulfilled. And even the ministry of John the Baptist, the same Lord Jesus Christ comes and puts a finger on the scripture. And he says, when we talk about John, we are not just talking about some minister. We are not just talking about some prophet. We are talking of one of the greatest prophets. Amen. Amen. There's no one born of a woman greater than this man. The same man who's questioning me right now to say, are you the one who's to come or shall we look for another one? The Lord Jesus Christ does not take that and try to criticize John, but he points to the scripture and he says, this is the one that is spoken of here. He is the one that is written of here. For this is the one of whom it is written, behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Amen. So the Lord Jesus Christ goes back to the scripture Amen. and points and finds a place that refers to John the Baptist. Amen. Amen. And that is one thing that a believer ought to do. Amen. There are so many things that are flying around, brothers and sisters. So many doctrines. 
flying around, message, doctrines flying around. But one thing that you need to do is to bring any teaching back to the scriptures. Because the prophet says the pillar of fire, the angel of the Lord will always take you back to the scriptures. So whatever teaching it is, it has got to come and line up with the scripture. Amen. Whatever position, whatever calling an individual has, they've got to come and show us their place in the scriptures. If they say they are another prophet after the prophet, amen, they've got to show us where it is in the scripture. Amen. Show us the seven, either it's the seven stars or the eight stars in his hand. Amen. And so there's got to be in the strength and the truth of anything is in its identification with the scriptures. And the blessed assurance that you can have as a believer is when you can find your place in the scriptures. Amen. Amen. And when you have found your place in the scriptures and you are the right person for that right portion of scripture, the Holy Spirit will come and vindicate you. Amen. 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 There are so many people who could have claimed to be the Messiah. Amen. Oh, he's the Christ is in the desert. The Christ is there. The Christ is there. But there was only one who could be the vindicated Christ. Amen. Amen. There is only one Elijah. Sometimes people say, well, Brother Branham was not the only one who was claiming to be Elijah. That is the truth. Even before the prophet was born, there were people who were claiming to be Elijah. That's a fact. But there was only one Elijah that the Holy Spirit could vindicate. Amen. 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 Why? Because the scripture is like the road of Aaron. Everybody else will come and bring their road. But the pillar of fire will minister on the road of the chosen one. Amen. He will be the one that will be manifested. And his road is the one that is going to burn. It's the same thing with the scripture, brother. You can try to claim it and make it yours. But if it doesn't belong to you, there is not going to be a vindication by the Holy Ghost. But the Holy Ghost will come and vindicate it if you are the right appointed individual to fulfill that scripture. So you can try to push it and try to squeeze yourself in it. Wait until the pillar of fire comes. Who is it going to vindicate? Amen. As the one who is supposed to fulfill that. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ was telling the disciples of John. That came to ask him, are you the one who is to come or shall we look for another one? He says, look around. What do you see? In other words, where do you see the vindication of the scripture of the coming of the Messiah? Look around you. The blind are seeing. Amen. The deaf, they are starting to hear. The gospel is preached to the poor. What do you see around? You see miracles. In other words, where do you see the vindication? And whatever vindication you are seeing, you go and tell John about what you have seen. Because the prophet will realize where the vindication is. The same thing with John the Baptist. When he was baptizing in the river Jordan, he baptized many, many people. But there was only one individual. Whom when that individual, when he came for the baptism, the spirit was going to come down. Not just come down, but to remain on that individual. And that individual was going to be the Christ. Amen. Amen. When, when John was baptizing people, he was watching out for that vindication. Amen. Who is going to be vindicated by the pillar of fire? Amen. And when the Lord Jesus Christ came, John saw that pillar of fire Amen. coming in the form of a dove and remaining upon him. Then he realized, this is the Messiah. Because the pillar of fire will vindicate you and your ministry and your place in his economy. Amen. Amen. That's why the prophet says the pillar of fire could speak to Eliezer. But not only Eliezer, he had to speak to the bride as well. There were many people in that town, in that city. But the pillar of fire was going to speak to one. Amen. Amen. Who was a near kinsman to Isaac. Who was a blood relative to Isaac. Amen. The pillar of fire led Eliezer to the well. And the prophet says he went ahead of Eliezer Amen. and went and called Rebekah to come to the well. Amen. Amen. So that the two could meet. Amen. And the prophet says that pillar of fire was only going to speak to Rebekah yes. because she was the appointed individual Amen. to fulfill that commission of Eliezer. Amen. Right? So it's the same thing with the message, brother. Amen. People, Many people can hear about it. Amen. Many people can claim to believe it. But the genuine believers of the message are those that are vindicated by the presence of God. Amen. 
Because it's not just study of the message. It's not just reading the quotations. It's not just having long skirts and long hair. It's not just dressing decent and speaking decent. But it is to be vindicated by the pillar of fire. That's what makes the difference. And the pillar of fire will not make a mistake and vindicate the wrong individual. It will vindicate the appointed individual. Amen. Amen. The same way that it went in that city and there were many beautiful damsels there. But there was only one Amen. appointed for Isaac. Amen. And the pillar of fire had to find the right one. Amen. And had to show by its leadership that this is the appointed one. Amen. And brother, sister, we live in that very day. Yes, when Eliezer has come forth. Amen. Amen. With his message. Amen. Amen. And that message has to go Amen. and find the right bride. Amen. Amen for Isaac. Amen. 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 And only the right bride for Isaac is the one that will receive the full quickening Amen. of the spirit. Amen. 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 Luke chapter 24. Luke 24. Verse 24. That's Clopas and his friend. In a very concerning period of time. Amen. When people don't know what's happening. And I believe we are in a very similar time. Amen. Amen. The Lord has manifested himself. In the form of a pillar of fire. Amen. Amen. And we have seen the pictures. We have seen the demonstration. Amen. Amen. All the discernment lines, all the miracles, all the testimonies that we read about. Amen. Amen. But somehow it goes a bit quiet. Amen. Amen. And along the way, this one comes with that. That one comes with this. I've seen him. I've seen him. This one says we've seen him. That one says, oh, really? Where is he? And there's all those arguments going forth. Amen. Amen. And in that situation, in that confusion, Clopas and his friend decide to go back to their denominations. Decide to go back to their hometown. They forget the word that he said, tarry in Jerusalem. Yeah. They are going to the wrong place. Yeah. They are supposed to stay and remain in Jerusalem. Yeah. But out of the disappointment of what has happened, the Lord Jesus Christ has just been crucified. They just get disappointed. And some people say they have seen him and they are on their way. Yeah. Amen. But the Lord Jesus Christ, because they are talking about him, they come amongst them. Yeah. And they start to explain to him and say, certain of them which were with us, went to the sepulchre and found it even so as the women had said. But him they saw not. Then said he unto them, O fools, and slow, to, slow of heart to believe, all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them all in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Amen. And they grew nigh unto the village, whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. Mm. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening. And the day was far spent, and he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread, and blessed it, and brake, and gave to them. And their eyes were opened, Amen. and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. Amen. The vindication of the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ was not something, some superior, some, some unscriptural manifestation. Amen. 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 But he came to be the fulfillment of scripture. Amen. He did not take people out of scripture. Amen. Because that's why these people, when their hearts were dismayed and they didn't know where to stand, and some people have gone to the sepulchre, but unfortunately they didn't find him. They were, there was no scripture that was promising them to find him there. Amen. 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 And that's why the Lord was firm when it came to him fulfilling the scripture. That's why even when Peter was saying, Lord, nothing will happen to you who stand and defend. He was trying to stand in the way of the fulfillment of scripture. Amen. That's why the, 
the response was not a response to try and pamper him and try to yeah. make him feel good. It was to tell him straight yeah. that this is the devil. Yeah. Yeah. There's only one individual, yeah. one entity that will stand in the way of the fulfillment of the scripture. Yeah. That's the devil. Yeah. And that devil can come in the form of a good brother. Yeah. Like in that particular case, Peter, a good brother who was always there, a zealous brother, but he was now starting to stand in the way of the fulfillment of scripture. And brothers and sisters, we can have good brothers, we can have good sisters, we can have good preachers, good gifted people, but if they stand in the way of scripture, there is no mercy. Because we are here to fulfill scripture. Amen. That's why beginning at Moses, and through the scriptures, amen. amen, he started to show them all the scriptures amen. that pertained to him. Amen. So he went back to the scriptures amen. and started to open up the scriptures to them amen. so that they could realize that there was no promise, amen, amen for the things that they were expecting. Amen. But the scripture had promised that he would die, yes. but he will resurrect at the yes. third day. Amen. amen. Even when he was saying, destroy this temple, amen, amen. and I will rebuild in three days. He was saying that statement, standing on a scripture. Because he knew that he said, I shall not suffer my Holy One to see corruption. He knew he was never going to be in the grave for more than three days. No single cell was going to corrupt. Because the scripture had already spoken. Amen. So whatever confidence the Lord Jesus Christ had in his ministry was based on scripture. Amen. Amen. Even John the Baptist when he was minister, his confidence was based on the scripture. Amen. 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 Even Paul, when he was teaching and going across the seas Amen. and doing all those things, his confidence was based on the scriptures. Amen. And even in the same way today, our confidence should be based on what is promised for us in this our day. Amen. And that, script, that promise has got to be a scriptural promise. Amen. It's nothing that should take us, out, take us out of scripture. It's something that should actually bring us into the scriptures. We find our place in the scriptures. We put our finger on it and we say, this is us. Amen. And once we identify that place, then brother, we can go into the world with boldness. We can cross the seas with boldness. We can meet devils. Amen. Fierce men like beasts, we can meet them, but we are best and standing on the foundation of the world, of the world. Amen. And that's what we need. Amen. Amen. A blessed assurance to find our place in the scriptures. And they say, brothers and sisters, this is where I stand. If we go to the book of Acts, chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, we can start from verse 13. Right? When the day of Pentecost is fully come, right? And they were all in one accord in one place. That's verse 1. And we know that uh, verse 3 says, And they appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire. And he set upon each of them. And we read a quotation here where the prophet says it was that same pillar of fire mm -hmm. dividing himself into the people. Yes. Amen. Amen. So the pillar of fire has come and divided himself Amen. into the believers. Amen. Amen. And when that happens, there's a manifestation. People are speaking with tongues and the spirit gives them utterance. Amen. And so many wonderful things are happening there. Amen. Verse 13 says, Others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. But Peter standing up with the eleven lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken unto my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, Amen. and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, Amen. and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Amen. People are trying to mock the revival. 
Amen. Amen. People are trying to mock the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. As it comes upon the people. Yeah. Peter does not start to say, look at them. Look at them. He goes to the scripture. Amen. Amen. And points them to Joel. And he says, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Amen. Amen. In other words, your best defense yeah. is in the scripture. Amen. 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 Not the somersaulting. Not the speaking in tongues. Amen. Not all these other theatrics. Your best defense yes, is sir. in you identifying your place in the scriptures. Amen. 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 That's why even when the Lord himself in the flesh was tempted. Amen. He had so many wonderful gifts. So many things he could have done. So many things he could have said. But he said it is written. Amen. Another temptation came. It is written. Amen. Another temptation came. It is written. Amen. Your victory is in you identifying your place in the scriptures. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. So you could have gone hunting with the prophet. Amen. And Brother Abraham could have walked and sat on your couch. Amen. And oh, brother, you might have dedicated you or dedicated your children or your grandchildren. A lot of things could have happened where you knew him personally. Amen. That is not your security. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That is not your security. Amen. Amen. Your security is in you identifying your place in the scriptures. Amen. The security that the prophet had was the angel of the Lord himself Amen. came and started to point out to the scriptures Amen. and say to him, look, Amen. These things that people are saying are too peculiar. You can actually find these things in the scriptures. Amen. And he says your gift is exactly like the gift of Moses. Amen. As the same way that God, Moses was given two signs, you shall also have two signs. Amen. Amen. And he starts to take the prophet back to the scriptures. Amen. Takes him to Malachi 4. Amen. Takes him to the book of Joshua. Amen. Takes him to Revelation 10, 7. Takes him to uh, uh, Luke 17, 30. All these scriptures, Amen. the angel of the Lord was not showing any, the prophet anything that was outside of scripture. Amen. Starts to take him back to, to, to Elohim visiting Abraham and the sign of discernment. Showing the prophet all these things that were happening in his life that they could be taken back to the scripture. Amen. And brother, when the prophet had that assurance Amen. that whatever was operating in his life was scriptural, Amen. then nothing could stop yeah. him. Amen. So the greatest assurance that brother Branham had was to know that whatever he was doing was based on the scriptures. Amen. But before he had that assurance, Amen. he wasn't too sure. Yeah. That's why he said to his wife, you know what, I've got to go. I don't know if I'll come back, but I can't come back in this condition in this state of confusion where I don't know if these things that are happening to me are devils or not. Mm -hmm. Because some people are calling me, they are saying this is evil spirits. Yeah. But I need to find out from God what this is all about. Yeah. And he packs his stuff and he goes to his cave. Amen. Amen. He goes to his cave and says, God he has to show me. Amen. 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 What this is all about. Amen. Amen. Because if you have not found your place in the scriptures, Amen. somebody can explain your position away from you. Amen. Amen. And we have a lot of that in the message. Amen. Where people don't know where they stand. Amen. Amen. And anyone can come and explain anything to them. And they can't find and point a finger to a scripture and say, Brother, this is the true baptism. I can see it in the scriptures. This is how I've been baptized. Amen. Amen. And this is where I stand. Amen. Brother, this is my calling. Because this is what the scripture says. The prophet explained it and brought it back to the scriptures. This is what the word says about me. I'm not moving to any place. You are not shifting on what I believe. Because you have a scriptural, solid foundation. And no man can take it away from you. And that's what the prophet had. After he came out, after the angel of the Lord showed him his place. Explained his gift to him. Amen. That it was a scriptural gift. Brother, then he could go all over the world. Amen. 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 He could go to Africa. He could go to Europe. Amen. He could go to India. Amen. He could operate any state of the United States Amen. with confidence, Amen. knowing that no demon is going to stand before me. Amen. It's a bold statement yes, to go into an auditorium that is full of people yes. of various opinions yes. and various anointings yes. and evil spirits. Yes. And say, now I take every spirit in here under my control. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 
That's not a man who's trying to guess. He's not a man who's not too sure of where he stands. That's a man who has perfect confidence in his position and knows that I'm supposed to be here. And I think the message needs a lot of people who are like that, who have perfect confidence on who they are. Amen. The message needs pastors like that. The message needs deacons like that. The message needs trustees like that. The message needs song leaders like that. The message needs believers like that. Who know that they are standing in their position because they found their name in the scripture. Because as long as, long as you are playing around, you are not too sure where you are supposed to be. You are going to be in trouble. Amen. Don't be caught in between two opinions for too long. You have spiritual amnesia. Make a decision and take a stand. Identify your place. Amen. And move towards your place. You stay too long trying to straddle the fence. You are in a state of confusion. And in that state, you cannot defeat a single demon. Because you cannot bluff a demon. A demon knows. In the name of Jesus. Whom Paul preaches. Brother. In the name of Jesus, who Paul preaches, and you are facing face to face with a demon, <laughs> you get into trouble. You get into serious trouble. It's not just the name, it's the life behind the name. You need to be sure of what you are doing. Sometimes we start fights that are bigger than us. We try to fight the devil when we are busy partaking of the devil's things. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Huh? Come on! In the name of Jesus. Amen. But in your phone, there's text messages, there's pictures, there's videos, there's all kinds of his things. Yeah, right. You are armed with his equipment and you are trying to cast him out. <laughs> huh? You are busy gossiping, talking about that person, that brother, that sister. Your home is a source of gossip. Your life is gossip. You can't meet people and not talk about somebody. And then when you are sick, Lord, I cast this demon in the name of Jesus. <laughs> what demon are you casting? And this is where people get in trouble. Yeah. We are trying to partake of two tables. Yes. You have to choose which table you are going to partake from and stand with that table. You cannot feed on the Lord's table and go and feed on the table where the meat has been sacrificed to idols, to strange gods. Amen. You take a stand, make a choice. Find your place in the scriptures. Who are you? Are you a son and a child of God? You take your place. And when you identify that you are a daughter of God, when you identify that you are a son of God, you start to line up your life in that Amen. direction. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. But we have a lot of believers who cannot take a position. That's right. Sitting, straddling the fence. Yeah. People can't tell where you stand. Are you a believer? Are you not a believer? Where exactly are you? Brothers, you, you will not be able to overcome the Amen. devil like that. Amen. The devil is overcome by you knowing your position Amen. and taking sides with Jesus. Amen. That's what the church needs. Amen. No fumbling around, no, 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 not being sure and walking in a state of confusion. You go to battle, you don't even know who's your enemy, who's not. You are going to get shot. You've got to be clear, who's the enemy here? Yeah. And is who, who's on my side? Yeah. Are you for us or against us? Yeah. I've got to know. Amen. 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 That's a believer. Yeah. You are standing on the scripture. Yeah. That's why Peter could stand out. Remember, they were hiding before. Yeah. But when the great Holy Spirit came in them, yeah. brother Peter got bold. Yeah. The same Peter who was denying him yeah. days before. But with the Holy Ghost, he gets so bold and he stands up to defend the faith. And he says, you see, 
This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. He starts to point them and take them back to the scriptures. Oh my. Even Stephen, when he was facing death, amen, and they gave him a small chance to say something, brother, he took them back to the scriptures. Because the scripture is the victory for the children of God. You overcome the devil by the word of God. Your victory is in the word of God. Nothing else, brother. You can have gifts. You can have wealth. You can have health. You can have all these abilities. But brother, if you are outside of the word, you are naked and blind. The same thing is you don't know it. But victory for the believer is in the scriptures. That's why we've been teaching here that we need to love to read our Bibles. Amen. There has to be a relationship with your Bible. Because the Bible explains to you who you are. Amen. Amen. And when you know who you are through your reading of the Bible, then you are stronger each day. You are feeding and you are getting stronger and stronger by the day. That's true. Amen. Revelation chapter 5. So we have spoken about others. Who could identify their place in the scriptures? Who could explain whatever was happening in their lives by the scriptures? And we know we could have gone to a lot of places where Brother Branham goes back to refer to the scriptures to speak about his own ministry. But I'm sure we are very familiar with all that. But now let us go to our place. Our place as the bride of Jesus Christ. Because I think it's very important. Revelation chapter 5. It's good to know the seasons, isn't it? The time. According to the scriptures. Revelation chapter 5, verse 1. And this is one thing that I would like for us to appreciate. That anything that we've been given by the messenger is for us. Amen. Right? Anything that the prophet has taught is for the bride. Amen. Now, no gift is best at everything. Right? You can't be a teacher, the best teacher of the word, and also be the best evangelist. Right? And also be the best pastor. You have a strength in yeah. areas that you are not so strong. Amen. Amen. But that is the purpose of the fivefold ministry. Amen. If you have an area that you are not good at, there is other gifts of God that can come and also are strong in those areas and you fortify one another. Amen. Right? So I don't believe there is any area of the message that we should say, brother, don't talk about the seals. Don't talk about the seals, brother. Seventh seal, brother. Don't talk about the seventh seal. If it has been spoken in the message, Amen. we speak about it. Amen. 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 And if there's any other gifts out there that can explain it better, brother, and they are led of the Holy Ghost, and we feel inspired that they should be here to teach those things, we bring them here Amen. to teach those things. Because it is the word of God. Amen. Amen. If we need an evangelist to do, come and do some work, we'll get them here to come and do it. Amen. If this COVID goes away anyway. <laughs> this demon-possessed COVID. <laughs> Amen. But the, a believer should not say, no, brother, don't talk about the trumpets. Don't talk about, oh, what, the thunders. Do you, do you believe the thunders? Yes, I believe the thunders. How can you be a message believer and you don't believe the thunders? You know, sometimes we just hear thunders. Oh, brother, are you from the Seven Thunder Movement? Yes. As far as it is scriptural, I'm in the Seven Thunders. But sometimes they are scarecrows. Around the word of God. Don't go there, brother. Don't, don't touch about the thunders. Don't talk about the seals. Don't talk about the trumpets. Don't talk about the three unclean spirits. Don't talk about so many things and people are putting boundaries. But brother, there is no other mystery. Because when he comes, the mystery of God should be finished. So we are trying to create mysteries that have already been revealed. Of course, the supernatural element remains. But the mystery has been revealed. So whatever the message teaches us, Amen. let us just believe it. Amen. 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 Sometimes you don't have to understand everything at the same time. 
Just be patient. Wait upon the Lord. Amen. Pray for the pastor. Pray for the minister. Pray for yourself that God will reveal it to you. But you don't have to shy away from the things that are in the message. Oh, brother, don't talk about it. the seventh seal. Oh, that's confusion, brother. It's the interpretation that is confusion. That's exactly right. And so people are very keen to talk about other things. Let's talk about dressing, brother. Let's talk about television, brother. Let's talk about heels, brother. Let's talk about this, brother, about hair, about all these things. We talk about them for sure. Yeah. They are the word. But let's talk about the seals also. Yeah. Let's talk about the thunders also. Yeah. Let's talk about the trumpets also. Yeah. Let's talk about the seven church ages also. Yeah. Let's talk about the whole word of God. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Because these are, that's why the prophet came. Amen. To give us these things. Amen. To give us rapturing faith. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Brothers. Muslims dress better than all of us. You can't even see their eyes. Huh? It, it's more than dressing. Now, it doesn't mean that we are going to forsake teaching about dressing and making sure that there's decency and, and we watch what's going on in the church and we try to address situations as they come. No. But it's more than that. This message is much more than that. We try to get people to the Holy Ghost yeah. so that the deacons don't have to stand at the door and try to ask sister, sister, if only you could have done this. Sister, and after service we call people aside. We want the Holy Ghost to speak to you Amen. when you are looking in the mirror. Amen. Amen. The Holy Ghost will look at those shoes and say, sister, without anyone telling you, this is you. Just look at it. What do you think? And you yourself, without anyone telling you, you Amen. kick them off, put them there. Amen. Amen. And find another pair. Yes. Right? Yes. That's where the church has to be. Yes, sir. That's where the church has to be. Where the individual, they become their own policeman. Yes. Amen. You want to say something about someone, then the Holy Spirit says, you don't need to wait for the pastor or the deacons to say, why would you talk like that? The Holy Spirit will say, are you supposed to say this? Amen. Is it of any profit to you to say yeah. this? Yeah. And without anyone questioning you, Amen. you keep quiet. Yeah. Because if you are not careful, you become a master of other areas. Yeah. And you focus on them and become very strong in them and you neglect other areas. Amen. But we have not been called to be strong in certain areas and be weak in certain areas. Amen. We've been called to perfection. Amen. We dress right. We speak right. Yeah. We understand our place in the scriptures. Yeah. We have the correct revelation of the message. And everything is in its place. Yeah. Amen. 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 That's what we need Amen. as a church. Yes. And I think that's the balance that the prophet always taught us about. Amen. Be balanced. Amen. You can go the far this way and far too much that way. Amen. But keep your, Amen. keep in line. Stay in line. Yes, right. That's what we strive to achieve. Amen. Yes, right. Amen. At the appropriate season, everything will be taught from this pulpit. But it's, it's got its place. Amen. Amen. Everything has got its place. So we, let's not shy away from anything. Amen. Amen. Sometimes maybe we speak about the seals, we speak about these things, and people say, ah, brother, when are we going to get the word? That's the word. Amen. That's the word. Amen. It's just the season. Amen. 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 At the time appointed, we will visit other things. Amen. We talk about essential Christian habits Amen. and talk about reading the Bible, about praying, amen, about attending church, amen. about all these things. Amen. But at a certain season, we speak about all these other things. Amen. And that doesn't mean that we are the best at them, but what upon my heart, that's what I'll preach. Amen. amen. And that's why we appreciate the fivefold ministry. Amen. The same scripture you can preach five sermons. Another one will come and preach ten sermons from the same scripture. Amen. And people will be like, brother, I've never seen it that way. That's the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. That's why it's pointless to try and pull other ministers down. Amen. Amen. Just as long as something is within the scriptures, let's uplift one another. Amen. Amen. For this church to go far, we need to uplift one another. 
Amen. Support those that are playing instruments. Brother, you play well, brother. Yeah, a bit more practice, brother. Things will work out, brother. It's beautiful what's coming. Support the song leaders, brother. Amen. Oh, brother, you are doing a good job, brother. You keep trying. I can see you get there. Amen. Support your pastor. No one will support your pastor for you. You are the one who has to do it. Oh, brother, you are doing a good job. We are praying for you, brother. Amen. Amen. You know that maybe he needs to improve. But... <laughs> <laughs> but you, you say something nice. Yes. Amen. Encourage the man Amen. so that he has more confidence. Amen. Amen. And when he's more confident, he does a better job Amen. than try to pull him down. Amen. Hey, approach the ministers. Brother, we are praying for you, brother. Amen. Oh, that, that's nice, brother. We appreciate that. Love one another. Encourage one another. Even the youth, when they come here singing, ah, brother, that was nice, brother. You young people are doing a good job, you know. We really are pre the church has a bright future with you guys. Encourage them. Let them gain confidence. What's the point of pulling them down? What's the point? Even a backslidden brother, it's pointless to just try and hammer them down and tell them, oh, brother, you are fallen, brother. Brother, oh, this condition is pathetic. Amen. You know it's a pathetic condition, but don't go there. Don't, he's already down. Why do you want to shove him down a pit again? Amen. Try to build him up. Yes, Try to build the brother up. Brother, you know, I know you have it in you. You, you. you come out of this, brother. You come out of this. This is just a phase that's passing, brother. You know, you're a child of God. God will help you, brother. Encourage somebody. And then they'll get stronger and stronger. Yeah, amen. You see someone who's sick. Yeah, this situation is bad, man. <laughs> <laughs> point what are you doing brother what are you doing sister wow man i've never seen it like this i tell you by the time you finish that conversation that person is expecting to be in a coffin in two days right you know it's a bad situation because you are looking at it but don't show that emotion Brother, God does the impossible. Amen. This is nothing, brother. Amen. With God, this is nothing. Amen. But you know inside, whoo, this one. <laughs> but build them up. Yes. Build right. them up. Amen. Give them confidence. Amen. Let them, you know, always try to leave someone better than the way they were before they met you. Amen. There's too much pulling each other down. Yeah. Always criticizing, trying to say negative, trying to show people how bad the situation is. No, 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 no. Amen. Amen. Just encourage them. Give them peace. Yeah. Give them comfort and encouragement. Pray for them. That's what the church needs. And that's why we gather together like this. So that we minister one to another. And sometimes your ministry might not be to stand behind the pulpit. But your ministry will be to see things and pray about them. Amen. Sometimes someone needs, just, all they need is just a smile. Sometimes your smile is all that someone needs. Just give somebody a smile. Yeah. Yes. All right. Revelation chapter 5. <coughs> and I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look there, thereon, not even to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Amen. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamp, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And he goes on to say that, uh, uh, that he cried out with a loud voice, 
uh, and everybody could have heard him when the lamb took out that book, praising God. Amen. John identified Amen. with that book. Amen. And he knew that his destiny Amen. was contained in that book. Amen. And when he found that there's no one who's able to open that book, he was crying, he was disappointed. Amen. Because he knew he was associated with the book. Amen. Amen. But when the lamp prevailed, Amen. when the lamp was found worthy to take the book Amen. and open the seals, Amen. brother John rejoiced. Amen. He rejoiced and shouted and worshipped God. Amen. Amen. Why? Because he realized that he was associated with the book. Amen. And we know that John is a type of the bride. Amen. You can even see it in his life. He was the closest to the, to the Lord. Amen. The one whom was loved of the Lord. Amen. The one who laid on his bosom. Yeah. Amen. He was close. Amen. Amen. He was always close to the Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Lord loved him. Yeah. But we know that he was a type of the bride. Yeah. That's why he was saying, what is it to you if John tarries until I come? Amen. 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 He knew what was coming ahead. Amen. He knew John what he represented. And what he was going to see. Amen. And because people misunderstood that saying, they said John is going to live, he's going to be alive until the Lord Jesus Christ comes back. But he was taken in another form. Amen. 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 To see right in our day Amen. what the Lord was going to do. Amen. Amen. And John, being a type of the bride, is concerned about the book. Amen. But the lion of the tribe of Judah Amen. prevails. And when he tends to look, it's a lamb. Yeah. He's the one who's worthy to take the book. Yeah. Let us go to Revelation chapter 10, uh, verse 7. All right. Let's just read here this quote. From the message, the bridge between the seven church ages and the seven seals. Before the prophet starts to preach on the seven seals, he preaches God hiding him, himself in simplicity and this message, the bridge. And he says here in paragraph 251, But now, in this sevenfold book of seals of redemption that the Lamb took within himself was the only one who could do it. And he took it from the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. This is the scripture that we read, right? In uh, Revelation chapter 5. Amen. Now, to claim, to claim his redemptive, to claim his rights, to claim for me and you what he redeemed us from. To see back to everything that Adam lost in the Garden of Eden. He has redeemed us back to that. Now, with that lamb, with the book in his hands, what are read, uh, we are ready to ask his grace and mercy upon us. To open the seven seal book to us. To let us look up past the curtain of time. Just a little bit. Oh my, notice when he took the book, the title did, sealed, just get that in your mind now. And broke the seals of the mystery to reveal them, to bring them to his, see, all his redeemed subjects. Amen. So he's going and taking the book in Revelation 5. Amen. He was not taking the book for himself. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Right? The Lamb was not taking the book uh, from the right hand of him who sat on the throne for himself. Amen. He was just the one who was found worthy to take the book. Amen. But the prophet is showing us here clearly. Before he gives the revelation, amen, the interpretation of the thunders, the interpretation of the opening of the seals, the prophet is showing us that that taking of the book, he was not taking for himself. Amen. But he was taking the book and opening the seals amen. for all his subjects. So the opening of the seals is for you. Amen. The taking of the book is for you. Amen. So the taking of the book is a scripture Amen. that you can put your finger to Amen. and say this book was taken for me. Amen. Because that's what the prophet is saying Amen. there. Amen. Amen. Let us go ahead. Amen. Revelation chapter 10. Let's start from verse 7. Very, very familiar portion of scripture Amen. for us. And we know about the angel. This is a very familiar portion of scripture. Amen. Verse 7. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, Amen. when he shall begin 
I think let us start from verse 1. Let's start from verse 1. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head. And his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open. That same book in Revelation chapter 5, Amen. that was closed, Amen. is coming now in Revelation chapter 10, Amen. and it's now open. Amen. And watch who's coming with it. Amen. A mighty angel Amen. with the cloud, Amen. closed with the cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head. Amen. You know who that is, Amen. because that ember light, that rainbow, Amen. that is over him, that's the pillar of fire. Amen. Amen. So that angel, mighty angel, is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Amen. Amen. And we see him coming down with an open book. Amen. Amen. And he says there, And he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth, and cried with a loud voice, and when he, uh, as when a lion roareth, and when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. Amen. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write. Amen. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, seal up those things which, are the, which the seven thunders uttered, Amen. and write them not. Amen. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven and swore by him that liveth forever and ever, who created the heaven and the, and the things that therein are, and the earth and the things that therein are, and the sea and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. Mm. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, Amen. when he shall begin to sound, mm. the mystery of God should be finished, Amen. as he had declared to his servants the prophets. Amen. And he goes ahead. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go, take the little book, which is open in the hand of the angel, which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. The same book that even John could not look at. Yeah. The same book that no one was worthy yeah. to even go and take from the right hand yeah. of him who sat upon the throne. Yeah. Now that the mystery has been revealed in Revelation 10:7. One man scripture, Amen. Revelation 10, 7. Amen. John representing many individuals in the bride. He is told that the same book that could not be taken by anybody, Amen. but that was taken by the Lamb. Amen. Now you can go and take it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So between Revelation 5 and this now, something has happened. Yeah. The book has been opened. Yeah. And the open book, the prayer says it has been opened for all his subjects. Amen. And the open book, his subjects who are in the bride, Amen. represented by John, Amen. they are told, go and take the book. Amen. 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 The mystery has been revealed yes. in Revelation 10:7. Yes. Revelation 8, going down to 11, Amen. now it is the bride being told, take that same book Amen. that has been revealed Amen. and you eat it. Yes. Amen. Oh my, I like verse 9. Because he says, and I went to the angel. Look at the boldness. And I went to the angel. Amen. And said unto him. He did not say and begged him and had a 40 day fast. And, oh, I was on my knees. I went to him and said unto him, give me the little book. Amen. And he said unto me, take it and eat it up. And it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. Amen. The open book was for all his subjects that are all over the world. All the nations, all the tongues, those people that he has called out, the open book is for them. Amen. And when he, he says, eat it. Amen. In other words, you partake of the book. Partake of the open book. Amen. Partake of the revealed book. And let it come on the inside. Amen. And the prophet says, oh, brother, 
It is good to testify about the Lord. Oh, the Lord is good. Oh, glory to God. It is sweet in your mouth. Amen. But when it comes on the inside and it is digested to become a part of you, and then people will call you an old boy. Amen. And people will call you a fanatic. And brother, you start to suffer persecution. Because all those that live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. Then it gets bitter. Amen. But when it gets bitter and you become one with that same open book that you have partaken of it, the Bible says, and he says unto you, prophesy. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Prophesy unto all the people, unto all the nations and all the tongues. Yeah. Let us open Revelation well, chapter 19. Amen. Oh my. Amen. All right. Verse let's just start from verse 9. 199. And he said unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do not do it. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Amen. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Amen. Revelation chapter 10. Eat the book. It shall be sweet in thy mouth, but in thy belly it shall be bitter. Amen. But when you have partaken of the book, it says after you have partaken of it, you prophesy. And Revelation chapter 19 shows us what that prophecy is. For the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. What is the testimony of Jesus Christ? The prophet shows us that it is partaking of the word and being able to live it out and demonstrate its realities. Amen. 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 In other words, it's not just the studying of the scripture. It's not just the reading of the word, but it is actually being a part of the word and manifesting the life that comes with the word. Amen. That's the testimony of Jesus Christ. It's not, oh brother, God is so good. My fridge wasn't working. I laid my hands on it and then it started working. That's the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's a wrong interpretation. But you did it out of leading of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. But the testimony of Jesus Christ is the life lived. Amen. The life itself becomes an interpretation of the Word of God. Amen. You become a written epistle that, are, that, are, that is read of all men. Amen. Amen. You start to live the life. Amen. Amen. You live the life and you become that interpretation. Amen. That is the spirit of prophecy. Amen. That's why when you have partaken of the book, he says, you go to all nations and prophesy. Yeah. Demonstrate the life that is in the revealed word. Yeah. Amen. The open book, partake of it. Yeah. Feed on it. Yeah. And when you feed on it, become that very word. Yeah. Prophesy. Yes, sir. Go and live the, the word. Yeah. Amen. Demonstrate the word. Yeah. Become the interpretation of the word. Yeah. That's our place, brother, sister. Yeah. We can put our finger on Revelation Chapter 10, verses 8 to 11. Amen. Amen. And say, this is my portion as the bride of Jesus Christ. We have received this open book. Yeah. It used to be sealed. But thank God Almighty for the Lamb. For he was worthy and he has taken the book. And he has opened it. Amen. And we have received the revelation of the seven thunders. Through the earthly angel who received the open book from the heavenly angel. Yeah. And because we have received it. Brother, then we are partaking of it by all the quotes that we read, by coming to church and hearing the message preached. We are partaking of the open book. And because we partake of that open book, then we have a special instruction to go and prophesy. Amen. After John was told, go and take the book, 
He went and says, please give me the book. Yeah. When you have received an instruction yeah. to go and prophesy, yeah. be bold and go and prophesy. Yeah. Don't fear nothing. Yeah. That's where we are right now as the bride. Yes, we have received the revelation of the word. We have received the revelation of the thunders. The seals have been opened. Brother, it is our turn to leave those seals. Yeah. Let me just read a few quotations as we come to a close. Amen. Amen. The prophet says in the message, the token, paragraph 229, he says, Like the spies, if they come right up here to the borderland and looked over and said, Well, I know it's there, but the obstacle is too great. We look like grasshoppers. They perished in the wilderness. Borderline believers. Borderline believers perish in the wilderness. Don't just come this far and say, I believe the message. You obey the message. You obey the messenger. Come into Christ. You say, "Well, I believe every word said, Brother Branham. That's good, but that's just being able to read." Mm -hmm. Oh, brother, I believe the message, brother. Brother Branham, every word that you believe, the bro the prophet says that's good, but it's just your ability to read and understand, yeah. right? He says, paragraph two thirty one. Take the message. Take it into your heart. That you must have the token. The very life that was in Christ be in you. When I see that, I will pass over you. He says, take that message. Don't just say, I believe it. Oh, brother, brother, I'm, I'm a message believer. He says, you take the message. Leave it. Take it into your heart. Amen. Then you have a token. And when he sees that, then he will pass over you. Amen. Amen. And he says here, in uh, the message, it is the rising of the sun. Paragraph uh, two or se uh, 307, he says, And the angel of the Lord, I told you, was around in a pillar of fire, quickening power. Let the world testify that it's the truth. And in that, they didn't know what it was, but we knew. Just look this away, and it's our Lord up there. You see, I believe he's referring to the picture of the cloud Amen. on Sunset Mountain. Amen. Amen. The world doesn't know what it is, but he says, but we know. Amen. He says, Amen. he is the one who opened those seals. Amen. Right? And he says, he is those seals. Amen. My, this is sweet, isn't it? He is the one who opened those seals. Yeah. He is those seals. Amen. For the whole word of God is Christ. Amen. And Christ is the seals that was opened. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. What is the opening of the seals then? The revealing of Christ. <laughs> Don't be afraid of the seals, brother. Don't be afraid of the thunder. It is the revealing of Jesus Christ. He is those seals. He is those thunders. Don't just hear thunders. No, no, no. We are just still talking about Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 He is the one who opened those seals. Amen. He is those seals. Amen. For those that are particular about the dates, this is 650418 after. Amen. After Amen. Mount Sunset. Amen. And after the seals have been preached in the Branham Tabernacle. This is 65. Amen. And this is what the prophet is saying. Amen. Amen. He says, he is one who opened those seals. Amen. He is those seals. Amen. For the whole world of God is Christ. Amen. And Christ is the seals that was opened. Amen. What is the opening of the seals then? Question mark. Revealing Christ. Amen. And the very seven angels which represented the seven churches Amen. all completed. And we couldn't even see it. They did. They took the picture. Not us. Amen. And there he is standing there. Amen. Supreme judge showing that he is the Alpha and Omega. Amen. The beginning and the end. Amen. What identification? Amen. The quickening power Amen. did that to us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. The opening of the seals Amen. and the revelation thereof Amen. is Christ revealing himself Amen. for you and me. Amen. 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 So when you read the book of Revelation and you see the seals, see yourself in that. Amen. 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 When the Preacher, whoever shall preach who say the thunders, don't be tense. Amen. Know that they are talking about me now. Hallelujah. Come on, brother.
preach the word. You are listening closely. Because you know the thunders are talking about you. Because your rapturing faith is in that revelation. Because the rapturing faith is in the revealing of Jesus Christ. That's where we are. And brothers, this should give us a spring in our step. What God has done for us. Revelation chapter 10, verses 8 to 11. That's an instruction to you and me. To take this word that we hear every service and go out there and leave it. It's an instruction. And when God has given you an instruction, he will back you up. He will not back a pretender. But if you are the appointed vessel to fulfill the scripture, the pillar of fire will back you up. Amen. Don't be a pretender. Be the real thing. If you are the bride of Jesus Christ, the pillar of fire wherever you go, and you are manifesting that you have the testimony of Jesus Christ, the pillar of fire will back you up. So that's our confidence. That's our strength. That's where we are today. We are in the plan of God. May the Lord richly bless you. We may stand on our feet. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So you still Emmanuel. Amen. When you read Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8, Amen. when it says Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today and forever, what do you see? Amen. You see the pillar of fire. Amen. The same pillar of fire that was in the first Exodus Amen. with the same pillar of fire that was in the second Exodus. Amen. It's exactly the same pillar of fire Amen. that is in the third Exodus. Amen. The same God who could deliver Israel from Egypt the same God will see you through. Amen. Don't worry about the COVID-19. Amen. Don't worry about the economic collapse. Amen. Don't worry about all these systems that are coming and everything. Amen. They are coming for our deliverance. Amen. When those things are in place, it's our time to go. Amen. 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 So let not, don't let your hearts faint. Yeah. Amen. Don't, don't allow stress and all these things to come because we are dismayed by the time. Amen. We are predestinated to live in this world yes. in this time. Amen. In these conditions. There is no one who is better equipped to live in this age than the bride of Jesus Christ. Amen. There is no decisions that the politicians and the economists and whoever, they are going to make that will surprise us. Amen. The word of prophecy has already said it. Amen. So we know where we stand. Amen. Amen. But we need to be sure. Amen. Make your calling and election sure. Yes, That's, you need to find your place in the scriptures. Yes. And you stand there. Teachings are going to come and go, brother. Doctrines will come and go. Things in the message will come and go. Know where you stand. Because if you don't know where you stand, you are going to be swept away. But this is the time to be bold. Amen. To believe your beliefs. And doubt your doubts. Praise God. Amen. I think let's just sing one song. Where he leads, I will follow. Amen. Where he leads. Me, I will follow where he leads me. I will follow is here. Amen. The great physician. What a sweet name. And he's here right now. Amen. Whatever you have in your heart, you believe God. 
and just reach out and touch him. Brother Michael will fail you. That's for sure. But he will never fail you. And he has promised that he is amongst us. And you need to believe that. The great and now is near the
Lord Jesus, we come before you. We thank you, Lord. Because you loved us so much, you had to die on the cross of Calvary for us. You took our place so that we could be in your place. And Father, Lord Jesus Christ, you've given us all these promises and you've given us this glorious commission that we should become, oh God, and our messenger, the final voice to the final age. What a commission. Help us, Father, to not only read about it, to not only read the quotes, to not only recite it. Oh God, Lord Jesus Christ, sometimes like a parrot just recites things that they hear, but they can't even understand what it is. But help us catch the revelation of what it is to us, that we can have that boldness to know that these scriptures, these quotes speak about us, that we may go and live a life that is worthy of the gospel, that the fruit of the Spirit can be seen in our lives. Be thou with us, Father. We came in here, needy people. I pray, that you sub I pray that you supply the needs of your children. And as we go home, I pray for the Holy Spirit, the after teacher, Lord, the guide. Oh, God, to guide us to all the truth. Break this word, this sermon of God, into the hearts of the people, that it may produce a life that is worthy of the gospel. We thank you, Father. Bless your people. We commit everything into your hands for your glory. In the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you so much for coming. Amen. Uh, really appreciate the Lord for His grace and His presence. Let's continue to pray one for another. Amen. Amen. And pray for the ministry here, for all that we are trying to do, that everything be led of the Holy Ghost. We are living in treacherous times. The enemy is hiding in the corners. But if we remember each other in prayer, all is well. Amen. Amen. The elephants and the buffaloes, they are stronger when they are together. Amen. The lion even knows that I can't get there. Amen. Amen. I'll get injured. Amen. But when one jumps out, amen, then it has a chance. Amen. But when we are united amen. in prayer, amen. one for another, amen. there is no room. Amen. amen. So God richly bless you. We ask Brother Jim to give, me, to give us a dismissal song.